Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to use Autotile extension. You can download the extension from my itch.io page. The link is in the description below. First thing first, let's prepare our tile set. You can find this image in the extension itch.io page, or in the extension folder. Here, the yellow lines represent the tile walls. For example, if the tile have four walls around it, this means there is no nearby tiles built around this tile. The arrows show you where to put the inner corners for the tile. Just like this tile's corners. Now, the numbers on the tiles represent each tile ID. This ID is used so when we import the tile into gdevelop, we import the tiles in their order. 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. This image will show you how to place your tiles in the right order. Finally, the X icon means this tile is empty, so don't put anything in that tile slot. Your tile set should look like this. Now let's import Auto Tile Extension to our new project. First, open the Project Manager. Now click on the plus icon beside the extensions. Then click Import Extension. Now select Auto Tile Extension JSON file. You can find it in the Extension folder if you got the extension from my itch.io page. But if you got the extension from GDevelop Store, then inside the example, open Project Manager, select Auto Tile Extension, click on Properties, then select Export Extension, export to a file. And now you can import the extension to other projects. Now, Let's create a new sprite object. This object will contain our tiles as frames. So I will name this object, Tiles. Now let's import our tiles. If you have your tiles exported like this, and each tile name is the tile ID order, then you can just simply select all of them and click Import. But if you have a tile set just like this, which is the way I recommend, then click on Create with Piscal, click on the folder icon, click on Browse Images, then select your tile set image and click open. Now click on import as sprite sheet. Now change the frame size to your tile size. My tiles in the example are 30 to by 32. So I will write 30 to for width and 30 to for height. Now click import and press OK. Now as you can see, all of our tiles are imported so easily and in the correct order. Click save. And that's it for the tiles object. Now we need another sprite object. This object is going to be used as the tile detector. So I will name it detector. Now I will just make a one by one black pixel. It doesn't matter the size or the look of this object. The extension will auto hide and use this object. Now we need to create the final sprite object. This object is going to move with our cursor, so I will name it Cursor. You can change the look of this object to anything you want. I will make mine one by one black pixel. And that's it. That's all the objects we need to use for the auto tile extension. Now let's see how to use the extension in the events. Our first event is going to be, at the beginning of the scene, create cursor object at 0x and 0y position. And then hide it. This event is required, because the cursor object must be in the scene. For the next event, we need to install rectangular grid extension. Click on project manager. Click on the plus icon beside extensions. Now write grid. Select rectangular grid. Click install in project. Now in the second event, we will leave the condition empty. Then our first action is, change the cursor object position to cursor X position and cursor Y position. And the second action, is to snap the cursor object to 32 by 32 grid because my tile set size is 32 by 32. If your tile set is 16 by 16, then set the grid to 16 by 16, and we set the offset to 0 on X and Y. Our third event is, if mouse left button is pressed, 
and the cursor object is not in collision with the tile object. Then create tile object at cursor object x minus 16 and y minus 16 position. We put minus 16 because our cursor object is in the center while our tile origin point is at 0 and my tile size is 30 to by 32. So 30 to divided by 2 equals 16. This will make sure to create our tile right in the center. For example, if your tile size is 16 by 16, then change this number to minus 8 because 16 divided by 2 equal 8. The next event is, if mouse right button is pressed and cursor object was in collision with tile. Then we use the auto tile extension delete action. In the first field, we enter our tile object. In the second field, we enter our detector object. And in the final field, we enter our cursor object. In the last event, we leave the condition empty. Then in the action, we search for auto tile system. In the first field, we enter our tile object. In the second field, we enter our detector object. And in the third field, we enter our cursor object. In the final field, we enter the distance between the cursor and the tiles that will get updated while building. The smaller the number, the less tiles the extension will check and the more performance you will gain. I recommend going with 50 pixels if your tile set is 32 by 32. If it's smaller than that, then you can try going with 30 or 25. And that's it. That's all we need for AutoTile to work. Now we can click Preview and watch the magic happen. If I click the left mouse button, I can create tiles. And if I click the right mouse button, I can remove the tiles. AutoTile extension will handle everything else for you. We can also make the cursor cooler. I will edit the cursor object in Piskel and replace the 1 by 1 black pixel with a 32 by 30 to black outline. And then we adjust the origin point to the center. And in the events, we remove the hide action because I want to see the cursor. And in the collision condition, we make sure to set the ignore the objects not overlapping to yes because our cursor now have the same size of the tiles. And to make sure the cursor's e order is always on top of the tiles, we will add the action to change the cursor's e order set to 2 and the tiles e order set to 1 when created. Now we can see our cursor and build or remove the tiles inside it. If you want to build more than one tile set, you will need another object for the tile set and another object for the cursor. Each tile set requires its own cursor object. Here in the example included with the extension, I already did that, and as you can see, I have for tiles objects, and for cursor objects, and one detector object. The detector object can be shared with tile set, so we only need one. And that's how you easily make auto tile mechanic in your project. The extension download link is in the description below. Happy game developing!